Twain once said that when there's a gold rush, it's a good time to be in the pick and shovel business. Today we look at the rapidly evolving markets in the marijuana green rush in our Canna Business Chronicles. All right, welcome back everybody. Just about 46 after the hour and joining us via Skype, we've got Roselda Neufville from High Def Transit out there in San Francisco, California. I don't know if we're connected or not, but can you hear me, Roselda? I sure can. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. You're coming in loud and clear. Before we start the interview and talk about High Def Transit, we've got a little video here from High Def Transit that we can show, give people maybe a little thumbnail sketch of what's going on, and then we'll go back to Roselda on the line uh, to talk more about this business. But check this commercial out first. High Def Transit from San Francisco, California. With over a billion people in the world, chances are there's somebody out there just like you. There are software engineers, pastry chefs, artists, and people with medical conditions. And what do many of these people have in common? They use marijuana. It's expected that marijuana will be legalized in California. And when that happens, what will be the biggest concern? Safety. That's where we come in. High Def Transit is a discreet shuttle service that also serves as a mobile vapor room. Members can medicate on board while our certified drivers get you to your destination safely so you can enjoy the ride. So hop in, make friends, and ride safe. High Def Transit. All right. So I'm really excited about this, Roselda, because to me, it sounds like Uber with a Duber. <laughs> Am I close? <laughs> You can definitely say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, high def transit. Now you're you're starting off in the Bay Area, and is that just kind of going to be like a test market, or is that just the first one you're getting into? Um, yes, that's um, more of a test market. As you know, with anything in business, you want to kind of start small, especially since this is something that's very very new in the um, San Francisco market. You know, we want to take time, connect with our members, actually, you know, build a relationship with them, kind of listen to some of the things that they want to see aboard our buses. What we are offering is um, for the first time in California is a place where working class professionals can actually take time out of their busy schedule after work or so, come aboard our buses and actually medicate. So it's a really, really new concept and anything, you know, that's new and stuff takes time. Mm. So uh, how would someone get a ride? Would they have to subscribe on a monthly basis? Is it like an Uber where I can just use an app and get picked up? I mean, how does this work? In the future, we definitely want to um, go towards the app um, at the moment. It is a membership-based service, so um, in California, it you, we only have medical marijuana, so you do have to be a patient. You would We have an annual fee. We are still in the works of kind of um, concreting that fee as well as a monthly membership. And so you would, it's a reservation service. Um, we are definitely aware that with a lot of working class professionals, discretion is absolutely key. So we would, um, so you would reserve a time slot aboard the bus. We would pick you up in an um, unmarked bus and have all the fun that you could possibly have on the inside. <laughs> well, very nice. Okay, so uh, it sounds almost like, um, you know, I fly a lot for the work that I do, and there's a thing mm -hmm. called Super Shuttle. You can, you can call the Super Shuttle when you get off at the airport, and it'll take you to the downtown core where the hotels are. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that kind of the idea here, where it's going to be around a specific time of day and specific locations, or what, what are the hours of operation going to be? So with the hours of operations, we are... Um, we're planning on off-peak and um, on-peak hours. On-peak hours are commute hours. So we are basing it around people who work on a nine to five schedule. But you know, with there's a lot of variations um, around here in San Francisco, the commute hours starts around three o'clock between three to seven. So those are our on-peak hours. Um, so with that, it'll be a little bit more um, strategized where you would where basically it's the first come, first serve type of basis mm -hmm. and such. But um, we are, however, one thing that differentiates us from some of the transportation services that are now available is that because we're still new, we're focusing on generalized areas in the downtown population, as well as areas um, with higher income um, um, citizens. And so during our off-peak hours, 
we would we're a little bit more flexible and we would be since we are on wheels we'll be able to drive to somewhere like a, say for instance a college college kids still are medical patients but if you need a place to uh, medicate while you're studying or you know you just want to kind of have fun you still will be able to do that on the bus and you don't have to worry about that nine to five traffic or you know that crowd all right now the elephant in the room of course would be what does the california highway patrol think of this idea well when we called san francisco's um public health department they did say that there is currently no law against it (laughs) (laughs) but you know it's kind of like lyft and uber um it's one of those things that because there is no law you know we have to kind of play it by ear And so we definitely have to, one, get a really good lawyer on our side, (laughs) as well as keep an eye on some of the changing laws. But I believe because what we're trying to do is trying to still keep it a discreet service, a lot of the times with public intoxication, it's when, um, you know, you become a public nuisance that things really, really start to, um, you know, boil up. Yeah. You know, I know that there are services that offer like pub crawls where they'll load mm-hmm. a bus up with people that are they're drinking at, from bar to bar. But I don't know that they're drinking in the car. Is there is there law that covers like where you have to be as far as the driver's area versus the passenger area? Does there have to be a wall in between anything like that? Um, At the moment, they once again don't have a law for that mm-hmm. or they don't have a law. But what we are planning to doing, because as you know, there is um, the drivers can get contact high. We are going to build a wall between the main compartment and the drivers. Even the driver has a separate um, entrance. That way, you know, there's no way how the THC can impair their driving abilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, as far as selling this to the public officials, I I imagine you could sell this as, you know, public safety is that, hey, at least these people aren't driving their own cars. We're ferrying them oh, from yes, place to place. Definitely, definitely. We are strongly promoting the DUI aspect. Um, just because, you know, once again, since our members will be able to medicate on board, they inherently aren't behind the wheel. So that is DUI at its best. It's just that, you know, instead of having a commercial where, you know, it it creates a fear. We're trying to make it fun. We're trying to make it because these people honestly are probably going to medicate. But, you know, as long as they medicate with us, you know, it it entices them to practice safe driving habits, whether they know it or not. Hmm. We're speaking with Roselda Neufville from High Def Transit. You can find out more at highdefdeftransit.com. Did I get that right? Right website? Yes. Okay. And uh, interesting service, uh, basically Uber for dubers. Uh, You get a ride uh, on this uh, bus system that allows you to medicate uh, on the bus. Uh, When do you anticipate or or have you already started this service? No, at the moment we are in our, in the fundraising aspects. Um, We are, I am so sorry about that. Um, Let's go ahead and cut that off. But, um, Let's see. Happens to the best of us. It happens. <laughs> I am not used to. Google wants to always alert me to everything. <laughs> There's right. something very serious happening, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, no, we are currently in the fundraising aspect. We have a campaign called um, Help Us Exist, where we're actually going out to the community. Um, You know, despite their views on um, marijuana, we're just asking people, why is it that you exist? Do you exist because you like to help old ladies cross the street or because you like to um, play pranks or is it because you're an activist? Um, That way we are spreading awareness of high def transit, but at the same time we're understanding, you know, this is something bigger. Yes, it's something fun that, you know, you for the first time ever in California, you can openly medicate on the bus, but you know, it's, we're seeing exactly what makes you tick. Right on. Well, uh, you know, Roselda, this is a perfect segue for me because I had an announcement for our audience to let them know that we've been uh, hired to cover the International Cannabis Business Conference that's taking place February 15th and 16th at the Hyatt Regency on the Embarcadero there in San Francisco. So. I'm hoping maybe by February we'll get a chance to meet, and if you don't have a bus, maybe we can uh, we can ad lib one. 
No. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can get uh, hit me up after the show. Uh, send me an email again. I'll give you the information for that conference because there'd be a, a ton of people there and and Thank some you. of those funders that you might want to meet. So that'd be very interesting. I'm I'm a big proponent of getting these these businesses started at a local level and with people involved in them that have a foot in the cannabis community rather than just you know carpetbaggers with a bunch of money who just see the next big money making venture so Roselda can you give us a, a bit of your background or how did you come up with this idea and how long have you been a part of the community all right um me my personal involvement with cannabis I guess I'm the lucky ones that can say that I started that journey in Amsterdam oh. I <laughs> you know the heart but um with high def transit definitely evolved along the way um high def actually started off as a um it was intended to be indoors in a um in a brick and mortar environment where you can watch movies and then um going to hemp con or sorry with the laws and regulations once again in san francisco you can only operate within a thousand or you can't operate within a thousand feet of a school or you know a lot of the times businesses they tend to complain about it so it really decreased our um the areas that we can um that we would be able to operate and after going to hempcon earlier this year um someone recommended that maybe we try it as a, a delivery service mainly just because they are still raiding um, dispensaries in California. Mm -hmm. and But upon speaking with some of the other delivery service owners, um, they advised against it. They said, one, you're a female, and unfortunately we are in a society where there's guns. So imagine a female comes to your, um, comes to your place, with a bag of weed and you know you have <laughs> you gotcha. know you may have the upper hand and you know it's not a good outcome for at least one of us so high def transit then um evolved into hey well why don't i let certain amount of people or, or you know crowd that i can you know make sure that they're safe and have a good time on a bus that way one because they are working class professionals it decreases the um, the chances for criminal activities and two it opens up this brand new industry we're providing recreational transportation and it hasn't been done in California at least on a daily service the way how I want to all right well Roselda I love the idea and I wish you all the luck in the world with your uh, your crowdfunding and, and getting the the funds raised for this business because I think it's an important service and it could go a long way to allaying people's fears about the stone driver. We'll be in touch. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you. All right. Check them out. HighDefTransit.com for more information on that. And that's all the time we got for Hour 1. But stay tuned. Hour 2 is next. We got Bacon Dan in the studio, so there's bound to be something interesting going on. Also, we've got our daily toker tunes for Irie Wednesday, some great uh, music from a French performer, Anna Tijoux, and more discussion of the news of the day, including the failure to indict in the Eric, <clears throat> excuse me, in the killing of Eric Garner uh, in New York City. I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. For everyone here at 420radio.org, until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it.